Now to the judiciary. The Federal High Court in Abuja has turned down an application by the former publicity secretary to the People's Democratic Party, Ulisa Mitu, for an adjournment in his trial for fraud. Mr. Metu had asked the court to adjourn his trial over his failing health. But Justice Okonabang insists that Metu's so-called medical report was fraudulently smuggled into the court and did not provide any reasonable explanation as to the nature of his illness. Our correspondent Amaka Okafo reports. It's day four of the resumed hearing in the case of corruption and money laundering against the former PDP National Publicity Secretary and the man at the center of the trial, Mr. Oli Sametu, is still not in court. Following arguments in an appeal seeking an adjournment to allow Mr. Metu to recuperate from several illnesses, including spinal cord disease, the trial judge, Justice Okon Abang, delivers his ruling. The trial judge rejects the request for an adjournment. His reasons? The medical report on which Mr. Metu hinged his appeal is fraudulent and was smuggled into court. And as such, the court cannot rely on it. Indeed, it was useless and fit for the trash can he said. He also added that the medical report effectively assumed the status of an application for a stay of proceedings because it did not state for how long Mr. Metu will be incapacitated to attend trial. The ruling is that uh, his lordship was not satisfied with the, uh, first of all, the manner in which the medical report was produced in court. He's entitled to do that. It's well within his uh, uh, jurisdiction. And um, Lordship still elected to exercise uh, his discretion, further discretion, to um, permit the adjournment and then um, allow uh, Mr. Meto, Chief Metro, to continue uh, on his bail until the conclusion of the trial. So we are quite satisfied with that. However, as to the application for Mr. Metu's bail to be revoked, Justice Abang stated that the court will show compassion and suspend its decision to revoke Mr. Metu's bail and hoped the defendant will turn a new leaf and attend his trial. But the court, based on the passionate appeal made by counsel, restrained itself from granting wholesale our application to have the bail revoked at this moment pending further development. So we are happy with it. So long as trial resumes on the 5th and 6th of February, we have no problem. The case has been adjourned to February 5th and 6th, 2018. And the judge ordered that every witness lined up by the defense must be in court on the set dates. Amaka Okafo, Channels Television News. The courts will certainly be busy as the Bring Back Our Girls group says it is suing the federal government for rights infringement. Two days ago, the group was stopped from marching to the presidential villa in protest over security challenges in Nigeria. A co-convener of the BBOG, Dr. Obiese Kwesili, confirmed their intention to sue while demanding an apology from the federal government over the controversial invitation to a police station in Abuja. And the search for justice continues with alleged kidnapped kingpin Chukudumeme Omamadike, popularly known as Evans, approaching a federal high court in Lagos to compel the police to unconditionally release 25 Mack trucks allegedly confiscated from him without a court order. Evans, through his lawyer, Ulukoya Ogungbeje, accused the Inspector General of Police and four others of unlawfully seizing the trucks and converting them to their personal use. He also asked the court to compel the five respondents to tender an apology to him and pay him the sum of 200 million naira as general and exemplary damages. But the lawyer to the respondents in the suit, Imano Lezi, asked the court to dismiss the suit with punitive cost, adding that Evans lied as the police only recovered 11 trucks from him. Justice Hadiza Rabi Shagari has listened to the arguments and submissions of both parties and adjourned till April 17 for judgment. And that's all from Abuja. Back to you, Ijoma. Lord Linda. Some states across the country are experiencing lack of potable water, with residents either resorting to polluted water from streams to get by or relying on supply from water tankers. On our big story tonight, we take a look at the issue of water scarcity in Bochi, Undo, Imo, Abia and Kwara states.
an essential commodity many people all over the world and even in Nigeria take for granted is being dearly sought after in some states of the Federation. Water. Imo State, Oere, one of the fastest growing cities in the southeastern region. But behind the bustling metropolis lies a serious shortage of clean pipe borne water. You don't have no water supply. I've been taking uh, this uh, borehole and people are dying because most of the boreholes are being sunk in places that are very dirty. But the Imo State government says there's light at the end of the tunnel. His Excellency has directed that efforts should be made within the next three four months to make sure that uh, water is distributed. Maybe God has something to do with it. After all, water tank trucks are meeting the needs of residents of Umahia municipality in Abia state in the absence of portable water supply by the government. In Umuchima village, it's a worst case scenario. As this stream serves as a swimming pool, a bathroom, and a water dispenser. I drank the water in the place I came, and uh, like I drink it now. So, and we also swim here, wash our clothes and other things. The Abia State Water Board says the situation will improve. We are designing a new system where the water sector will work holistically. Not just this administration, we want a situation where the water sector will work for at least another 50 years without breaking down. We don't have water. We fight for water at the stream. My children didn't have water to bathe today before they went to school. We don't have water to drink. That's the hardship Fatima Yuba and other residents of Ajishaye community in Kwara State are enduring. A trip to the Kwara State Ministry of Water Resources came up empty, as the cabinet has been dissolved with no officials on ground. Akure, Undo State. Here, the water kegs are the stars of the show. Your access to clean water can be truncated for lack of a keg. I'm suffering about this water. I come from all the way from Okaru, and I, where we can see need water to drink is when we reach this uh, Ikere River. I see that everybody, uh, how everybody full here to uh, searching for good water to drink. In Bochi State, the Gubi Dam water treatment plant performs below capacity, supplying 30 million liters instead of 45 million liters, therefore supplying water to only 50.96% of the population it's meant to serve. We are right now on the expansion processes. We have a, government, we have a World Bank assistance and um, we have almost concluded on the major consultancies and we are about to launch the rehabilitation and expansion of the facilities. The stark contrast between those who do not have access to portable water and those who do is like night and day. The government is expected to rise to the occasion and plug those gaps everywhere as its constitutional responsibility. There's an attempt to further the local content policy and increase economic gains with the arrival of the largest vessel of its kind on Nigerian waters. The vessel, which will be under the care of the Nigerian Ports Authority, has the capacity to carry more than 200,000 barrels of crude oil on a daily basis. A boat ride across the waters of the marina brings us to the Lagos Deep Offshore Logistics Base, known as LADOL, to witness an important event along with a mixed group of people. It's the arrival and birth of Egina, a floating, production, storage and offloading vessel, FPSO. Staff of the Nigerian Ports Authority, financier of the project Total, and Ladol are here to watch it come in. The Agena is special for several reasons. This is the largest um, vessel of this nature, I think, in the whole of Africa. It has the capacity to produce over 200,000 
barrels of crude oil daily. Back at a reception in honor of this momentous event, the managing director of the Nigerian Port Authority, who is delighted about the amount of business the vessel will attract, says NPA has the capacity to handle a vessel of this size. The NPA has embarked on massive investment, which includes the purchase of four new tugboats, the dredging and maintenance, the maintenance dredging of all our channels, as well as a campaign for the removal of wrecks across all our waterways. The huge vessel is not yet completely built. Twelve of its expected 18 modules built in South Korea are what's visible now. What's most interesting is that the six remaining modules are being fabricated in Nigeria. It is the largest vessel that is having a significant portion of its fabrication being done in Nigeria. So it's a significant milestone for us in the country when you look at our local content policy. We believe that this is the first of many. There will be many more FPSOs that will be fabricated in Nigeria. The vessel is expected to spend six months at the Ladol Free Trade Zone while the six top side modules are being fabricated on it. It will be kept and protected in local waters by the NP. Let's cross over to business news now, and here's Anne Wild. You first. First Bank. Thanks a lot, Ijoma. Welcome to Business News. As the World Economic Forum enters its third day, Nigeria's Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, says that the country's security challenge will not deter global investors. After a closed-door meeting with the private sector on the sidelines of the World Economic Forum, Professor Oshibajo said the current administration has its focus not in the 2019 elections, but on enduring financial prudence and economic stability. Our correspondent Gloria Umezoke reports. Quite a number of world leaders converged in one place in an informal meeting on the third day of the World Economic Forum. Among them is Nigeria's Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo. The Vice President held separate closed-door meetings with Bill Gates, where issues of eradicating polio, agriculture and financial inclusion were discussed. Professor Shibajo says security situation is not a deterrent for global investors in Nigeria. I think that global investors understand that security challenges are everywhere and that so long as you are able to provide enough, uh, uh, enough grounds for them, for people to believe that by and large there is safety. I mean, you look at what's going on elsewhere in the world. The current administration, according to him, is more focused on ensuring prudence in financial spending and stabilizing the Naira. The government says Nigerians will in no time begin to feel many of these impactful strides, but it will require more time and aggressiveness. Well, we're spending 1.3 trillion on capital, the highest in the history of the country. So with 60% less revenue, we're, we're, we're spending much more on capital, 30% on capital, 1.3 trillion. So I think that what, what, what's important to bear in mind is that we have changed the model of governance in Nigeria substantially. We've changed it. It is now we're emphasizing good governance, especially financial prudence. The third day of the World Economic Forum has seen the U.S. President Donald Trump attend amidst heightened security. Countries, particularly Nigeria, have been pushing for greater collaboration through talks uh, towards economy, uh, terrorism, and including extremist behavior. The government sees a positive outcome from here. From the World Economic Forum Center here in Davos, Switzerland, Gloria Umezuke, Channel Television News. Our banking and industrial goods stocks remain under pressure as profit taking by investors extends into a fourth session this week at the local equities market. Shimezio Biwago has the details. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Report. Dangote cement was the major cause of the drop in today's market indices as sell pressure took a heavy toll on the cement giant's share price. This heavily capitalized stock lost 8 Naira 84 Kobo down by 3.29%. 
Traders believe that if Dango the Cement had gained or remained unchanged, the market would have managed to enter the green zone. However, at the close of Thursday's trading, the main index went down by 0.99%. Bargain hunting prevailed today, as most equities that lost in the previous sessions made a quick recovery. This is most evident in the Tier 2 banks. Again, three out of the five major indices lost, with the banking sector recording a lot of improvement from the previous close. Transaction volume and value remain good. There's just one trading day left this week, and traders are hopeful they would have a good Friday. And that was the Stock Market Report. I'm Chimeze Obi Iwago. Well, let's see how other global markets fared today at the close of business. Thanks for watching Business News tonight. It's back to you, Ijoma. You first. First Bank. Thanks a lot, Anne. Still ahead on the news at 10, Nigeria Football Federation contracts Swedish coach Thomas Denovy for the role of head coach of the eight-time African champion Super Falcons. That's on sports. Please stay with us.